lot of people are talking about how so many different characteristics of the physical world uh, in the nature of particles, masses, forces, energy have to be tuned just so right in order for us to have the world. Uh, how do we understand this? Well, one way of understanding it would be that everything has been finely tailored so that the world would in include intelligent beings and there is a cosmic fine tuner who is a very good tailor. <laughs> uh, another way of understanding it would be that there exist inside an enormous cosmos, meaning everything which exists, uh, regions which are worth calling universes, which differ in their characteristics, perhaps just in a fairly random way, and that practically all of these universes end up with characteristics which are utterly hostile to life. We happen to be in one of the very rare, sorry, we have to be in one of the <laughs> very rare universes uh, in which life is uh, possible. It just happened that this universe, when it developed from some perhaps mushy state in which its characteristics weren't yet settled, uh, froze out into a situation where the forces of nature were just right to produce human beings and other intelligent beings in due course. Different people use the anthropic principle in different ways. Uh, many scientists use it to really exclude a religious explanation for the reality of the cosmos. Religious leaders or people, philosophers, would tend to point to the underlying fact of the anthropic, the anthropic principle, the fine-tuning of the universe, as defending their argument. Uh, you've said that the fine-tuning of the universe can actually, actually supports both hypotheses. Yes, I think this isn't too controversial. Uh, if you're alone on an island with um, Billy and Charlie and you find that your wallet has been stolen, this increases the probability that Billy is a thief and also increases the probability that Charlie is a thief. So similarly, the fine-tuning increases the probability that there's a cosmic fine-tuner and it also increases the probability that there are vastly many universes uh, most of which are not suitable for life. Now, what is the alternative to those two views? Uh, alternative to those two views is that the fine-tuning is absolutely impossible because all the characteristics which people uh, talk about as having been fine-tuned are in fact dictated by basic physics. And um, it, it, it could be that the basic physics was uh, so basic that not even God could fiddle with it without having the whole thing fly to bits, uh, just not work at all. Or it could be that the basic physics, although not settled by God, is still dictating everything in such a way that um, you, you, you don't get different things occurring in different places so as to make those different places worth calling different universes. They're all very much the same one as the other. That could be so. I think that the evidence seems to show it's not so, but uh, the evidence is controversial. The things which people point to as instances of fine-tuning, uh, practically all of them could be doubted. So, in order to be universally exhausted, to cover every possibility, we now are limited to three. We are limited to a single underlying theory that is by force or by necessity of which there can be no other way. Mm -hmm. We have a second possibility of a multiplicity of universes in which these, the fine tuning differs perhaps substantially among them. And a third is, as you've said, a God hypothesis or some supernatural uh, uh, tailoring of the environment. Is that it? Is that universally exhaustive? Are those my choices to understand everything? Well, I think you could split some of those choices up a bit more. For example, uh, if you talked about a necessity which 
pushes everything in that, this sort of direction. You might take the view of some quantum physicists who say that uh, what quantum physics shows is that nothing is real until it's been observed, and therefore the sort of supposed reality uh, in which there were no observers is some sort of contradiction. Now, I myself think that's a completely wrong and gratuitous reading of quantum physics, but these are some very clever people there who are out there thinking this sort of thing. And so I don't want to say that <laughs> what you just listed as the alternatives the, cover the entire field, because that sort of dictation uh, would be quite different from the sort of dictation which you get from God or the sort of dictation which you get from pure mathematics or something like that. This, this would be a dictation from some supposed connection between consciousness and reality uh, that quantum physics is telling us about. So that would build a, uh, the, the necessity possibility would then have two big branches. One is a... Uh, a non-conscious mathematical derivation of some simple formula mm -hmm. that would be underlying it. The other yeah. would have some thing not physical, consciousness God. In a sense, then, it would circle back to the, to the God hypothesis or yep. consciousness, God in the most general sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's so, and I think you also have to take into account that something we may not no, no, not what is uh, dictating it all. That um, I, I came to you because you're supposed to know all the answers. Ah, philosophers <laughs> love to think that they would, but unfortunately, <laughs> their low salaries show <laughs> that surely they don't. 